Occupational Therapy Evidence-Based Practice Integrating Music Music as an Intervention As an occupational therapist, music is integrated into treatments. The tempo of an exercise appears to change with the rhythm of the music. Music appears to have an energizing or even a calming effect. So, can music be used to calm a patient who has increased behaviors? So what does the evidence say? The questions to be answered are, is music a valid therapeutic intervention for occupational therapy? And is there research that specifically addresses music and the effect on persons with dementia? Music as an intervention. According to the American Music Therapy Association, music has been documented and referenced since 1789. The idea of music affecting health and behavior was noted in writings from Aristotle and Plato. So music is not a new concept. Evidence-based practice. As an occupational therapist, we have to define what evidence-based practice is. It is a process that allows a clinician to apply clinical questions, appraise evidence, apply the evidence in collaboration with the individual client, and evaluate the outcomes. So let's look at the evidence. There are very few articles specifically addressing occupational therapy and the use of music with patients diagnosed with dementia. The focus is reducing behaviors as this is often the reason a client is referred to occupational therapy at a skilled nursing home. Often we will have that referral of, can you please come see this patient? He won't stop pacing. Can you please see this lady? She won't stop screaming. So the question is, does music decrease disruptive vocalizations of persons with dementia? I looked at one article and did an appraisal of the evidence. I reviewed the article, The Effect of Music on Repetitive Disruptive Vocalizations of Persons with Dementia. It was completed in 1994. The authors were Julie Caspi and Margot Holm. Here's the reference. As you can see, it was published in the American Journal of Occupational Therapy in 1994. So what level of evidence is this article, this research study? The level of evidence, according to the hierarchy of levels of evidence, the research study is a level three. I took this from the hierarchy levels of Kielhofner in Research in Occupational Therapy, Methods of Inquiry for Enhancing Practice, Chapter 42. It is a level three evidence because this research has a mixed design in where pre and post study of a single group of subjects assessed at baseline and then during the intervention. The research also attempted to use randomization of the intervention using three single subject withdrawal designs. The study design was such. There were three single subject withdrawal designs. The intervention was music. There was a pattern of A, B, A. The second pattern was A, C, A. And the third pattern was A, B, C. A is no intervention. B was relaxing classical music. C was the patient's favorite music. The study subjects were identified at a long-term care facility. These patients, or residents, had disruptive vocalizations and were diagnosed with dementia, the Alzheimer's type. Inclusion and exclusion criteria was defined in the research study. The study was completed at a single site facility. The subjects included or were identified five residents met the criteria. Only three residents were identified for the study and they were chosen by nursing staff. The nursing staff identified these residents as the most disruptive. Occupational therapists are often asked to interview with the most disruptive residents. Randomization was completed. The three subjects were randomly assigned to a specific sequence. Subject 1 had the A, B, C, A design. 
Subject 2 had the A-C-A -A design. Subject 3 had the A-B-A -A design. Therefore, if you look at it, Subject 1 had no intervention, relaxing music, favorite music, and then no intervention again. Subject 2 had no intervention, favorite music, and then no intervention. And Subject 3 had no intervention, relaxing classical music, and no intervention. The procedures, there were specific procedures for the intervention of the music was outlined in the research study. The use of headphones or the use of non-headphones was noted. The volume of the music was indicated to be suitable for each patient. The procedure for the data collection was discussed. Data collection was on subjects 2 and 3, completed over a 10-minute session for 12 observation days. In subject 1, data collection was completed for 10-minute sessions for 16 observed days. During the data of analysis, the mean and standard deviation was computed for repetitive, disruptive vocalizations presented in each phase. A Bartlett's test was used to determine whether autocorrection coefficient was st statistically significant. The results showed that there was a change in the mean level of repetitive, disruptive vocalizations for all subjects while listening to music. It showed that the average disruption decreased. There was an average decrease in the mean level of verbalizations during each phase of the intervention phases as compared to the mean level during the first phase. This was quoted directly from the research article. If you look at figure one, up here you can look at figure one and it shows the number of disruptive vocalizations for the first patient, subject one. At baseline there were random verbalizations. During the classical music phase, it leveled off and it was calming. Favorite music showed the same, and then it went back down to baseline. Looking at these three figures on this figure one, it showed the different baseline, the verbalizations. It showed how each music affected the different patients. Figure two showed the line calculated in the baseline phase and extended into the two observation phases. So what does the study indicate? It indicated that in subject one, according to the Bloom probability table, there was a significant treatment effect with P value of 0.5 or less. The intervention of the classical music and favorite music decreased the number of repetitive behaviors. In subject two, according to the Bloom probability test, there was a significant treatment effect. Again, with subject two, the intervention of the subject's favorite music did decrease the number of repetitive behavior, disruptive vocalizations. Subject three, the repetitive disruptive vocalization data points during the intervention phase did not indicate a significant difference. This subject only had classical music as an intervention. Perhaps that was not the type of music he would have chose to relax. So can music really be an intervention? The study results did indicate that music significantly decreased repetitive behaviors that were being studied in two of the three subjects. Evidence-based practitioner would reflect on the fact that it is important to select music of the patient's preference. The study did indicate that the effect of music was only investigated as it related to one variable in the study. Future research should investigate not only the effect on behavior, but physiological responses to increase a patient's ability function. Music has an effect on blood pressure, breathing, and all sorts of emotions. Thoughts. Here are my thoughts. Observations in a skilled nursing facility would present with an assumption that music does have an effect and an impact on behavior. Individuals with dementia will often sing songs from the past without an issue. However, they cannot communicate their needs. Individuals with dementia will often wander aimlessly. However, when music is played, they will sway to the rhythm or dance a waltz if given the opportunity. Occupational therapists 
use music as, as an adjunct already. This, this study demonstrated the value for further research. The study did show a significant statistical decrease with disruptive vocalizations for two out of three individuals in their studies. Clinicians should consider music as an intervention to decrease disruptive vocalization. As an evidence-based practice clinician, we need to think about our awareness, creativity, judgment, and consultation for our individual patients.